We drove down a street one night. A street I didn't know. We should think about a cruise sometime. Yeah. Wait, whoa. Uh, Nolan, take yeah. a vacation? Are you happy? I mean, you've been here 25 years now, right? Almost 26. I must have thought about making a change from time to time. Nothing turned out the way I thought, I guess. And suddenly, I'm 60 years old. Well, you want to give me a ride? Excuse me? Asked if you want to give me a ride. You sure. I don't even know your name. Leo. I'm Nolan. Really swamped to work here, and the only way to get through it is if I stay late. We have separate beds, separate lives, separate rooms. Why? I need to talk to you, Leo. I went out on a limb for Get out of my house. I'm just trying to help you. And... I tried to call you at the bank. Hey, princess. Where's my mom? Hey! Leave him alone! Oh my God, Nolan, what happened? I can't fool you, can I? No, you can't. I love you, Joy. That was never a lie. It's just time for us to be in the real world. Maybe it's never too late to finally start living the life you really want. How you doing? Thanks so much for coming. Dale, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Uh, this was completed. I mean, this showed at Tribeca in 2014, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this, this, this film's been completed for, for quite some time, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Just over a year. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, did you have trouble finding distribution for it? Was, it? was it locked after Tribeca? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you, you make a movie about a guy in his 60s coming out, you know, you're not going to beat Jurassic World this weekend, you know? So you, you, you just sort of do it because you're hoping that something touched you, you know? And, uh, and then, you know, uh, you hope that it gets out there and here it is, you know? So I don't know. That's the voodoo world I can't keep up with, you know? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you usually write your films, right? You're, or, you know, you've written a few of your films. You didn't write this. How did the script get to you? What, what touched you about it? Um, you know, I... I, I, I was kind of, uh, you know, I just, just started reading. I read stuff, you know, and, and uh, it, it kind of touched me because, uh, oh, you know, a lot of things, you know, um, uh, you know, well, like my, my parents got divorced when after like 40 something years of marriage and me and my sisters were like, what are you crazy, ma? You know, what are you going to do? You know, and she's like, well, I'm not done yet. And uh, for whatever reason, that was in my mind while reading it. And, and uh, you know, Can I ask, were they in a bad place or were they just kind of like, I want to. I want to try something new. <laughs> I, you know, my father and me are similar. We could probably. He he was happy sitting in Astoria for the rest of his life. My mother wanted to do a little more than that. You know, right. um, uh, so so it, no, it, it was in some ways. You know, what we tried very hard with the film was. Uh, I, I didn't think of the marriage was awful. I thought that they were loving and, and they loved each other. Maybe not um, in the way that was going to work for um, the character Nolan. Um, so uh, that, that was, was maybe what interested me the most because if, uh, if Robin Williams' character were, say, 23 and uh, he married at 18, this would be the story of coming out and then you go hit Chelsea and life is good, you know? But uh, because of the ages of Kathy Baker and, and, the, and, and, and Robin's characters, it became more complex and uh, it was more for me the story of letting go than, say, coming out, you know? Um, how do you let go of the love of your life? It is the love of your, of your life, you know? Um, they, they, they did love each other, I thought, so. Oh, they absolutely loved each other, and it came across very tenderly, if not cold at times, but there, there was a tender relationship there between Kathy Baker and Robin Williams. Um, talk to me about how his relationship to his sexuality, because as much as he is, he's, he's picking up a prostitute and, you know, he's spending time with him and creating a relationship with him, it's not necessarily sexual, although he does end up sort of defining himself as a, as a gay man. He's looking for something that is, uh, I mean, rarely we see the closeness that one feels with their sexuality rather than just the sexual aspect of, this, of their sexuality. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when we were in those, there's scenes where um, they're in like a motel room together. You know, I, I wasn't even sure. You know, it was funny making the film. Um, uh, uh, it might be my ignorance, but him being gay was, yeah, sure. 
he's gay. He, he, this could happen with a woman or, or a guy. I, I, although I believe the character was gay. Um, uh, but uh, in the motel rooms when we shot those scenes, uh, you know, we would talk about it a lot. And it, it'd be like Robin, his thought on it, which I really liked, was he was looking at himself at 23 with, with the, the actor Leo, the, the character Leo, you know, like, like oh, my, man, that could have been me, you know, like, what did I do? You know, I could have had a V8, <laughs> but, you know. Um, so so it, it was, sure, you know, we, we, we had things where we, we messed with, go, maybe it'd be a, a bit more sexual in there, and you listen, we were going to get an R, and we weren't worried about pissing off the studios with this big, huge movie. Um, it just felt more appropriate that this was a story about a man at his age looking at himself. To get into that motel room, man, we rewrote that thing 4,000 times because I was like, I don't know how he's going to walk in that door. You know, so it was much more about looking at you, all that could have been, you know? That, well, that. it's also looking at intimacy. Intimacy is more than sex when it comes to sexuality. I mean, the way that uh, Robin Williams' character feels when he's touching Leo, when he's, ho when he's holding Leo and wants to hold him, uh, sure, it's an expression of his uh, uh, of his sexuality, but it's also an expression of how he gets intimate with someone and how he hasn't experienced intimacy in such a long time. And this character, Leo, can't experience any kind of intimacy because he's protected from it. Yeah, I mean, he was looking at an alien in there, you know? He didn't know what to do with it, you know? And, uh, and you know, every actor wants to have a long backstory. And, you know, uh, Roberto, who played Leo, you know, he would say... You know, we talk about this intimacy. Well, why doesn't he want to be intimate? And, you know, he has a big backstory where it would conjure up a lot of emotions that he didn't want to get to. And I just cut to the chase. I'm like, listen, if you get intimate, you got to spend twice as much time for less money with this lunatic. Get out of the room. You're very practical. <laughs> very practical, you know. But, but of course, the backstory is what Actors makes... Actors, not so practical, actually. Not so practical. Just get, get, get out of here as quick as possible. Yeah. If you hug him, it's an extra five minutes, you know. <laughs> but... Uh, but it was, but it is good. I think when there are those backstories, because the context do, does come out. You know, it isn't. You just do it because you're trying to move it along. But um, so uh, yeah, it, it, it's a bit of of, of a strange, in intimate film in its untouchy way. I would say it's a much um, softer, sweeter film than 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 you've previously made. Would you Would you agree with that, or am I making an assumption about your films that you don't uh, feel? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just the story of, of, of you know, i am always been a bit obsessed with, you know, friendship and the passage of time, and this, this engulfed both those things for me, you know, um, the, the quieter scenes, you know, we shoot them, and sometimes it'll, it'll be like, Chung Hoon Chung shot this film, who shot like old boy, and so he'd be like, this is, we got to shoot this scene, really boring, <laughs> he'd be like, well, just, it's boring, you know, it's, it's borders on boring, you know, because it's so, we tried very hard to make it feel honest, you know, and you know, when you have good actors like Kathy Baker and Bob Odenkirk and Robin Williams and all that, you know, you just, I'm going to trust their eyes every once in a while, you know, so it was kind of fun in that way, you know. Robin's doing a, a lot with this character in this film as well. It's clear, it's all in his body, it's in his eyes, it's in the way he talks. You know, the, I, I noticed at one point in, in, in the bank, he has this cell phone that he's waiting for a call from Leo, and just the way Robin picked up, delicately picked up the phone, and kind of walked out, it was so specific to this character. What kind of conversations did you have with him prior to shooting, while shooting, about mannerisms, about body language, or was it just what he brought, and you were kind of like, "Go, all right, Robin, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, with, with a, an actor like him, you talk a lot. <laughs> a lot, you know? And it's, <laughs> and it's kind of great, you know? I mean, you, you think, and we talked about this, but it's like, you got a guy who's won Academy Awards, he doesn't need this little movie. He's done everything, you know. But we were shooting in Nashville, and 2 in the morning, you know, movie weird world, you get a lunch at 2 in the morning because you take an hour break, and he'd be like, we, we got to talk about this next scene. Let's take a walk. I'd say, okay, you know, and we'd be walking 20 blocks in Nashville at 2 in the morning, and people are like, yo, Jumanji, <laughs> or whatever, you know. <laughs> and he'd be like, I got a new job. And then he, <laughs> so, so it, it's kind of, but he, he'd be, he was very specific about everything, you know. I mean, it, it was really mind blowing to me because I could talk about it all day long. You know, I talk about anything to these guys, but specifically, if we're going to talk about a role or or a scene, it was really fun. But I don't think he was overly calculated about what he would do. But he would think about it all, you know. And he, he'd be in that room when Bob Odenkirk showed up, who's an incredible actor. And you know, 
um, a, a fellow comedian as he, he was, you know, like they had never met. So right away they would start, you know, maybe joking a little. And then he'd walk over to me and he'd say, what was I just doing? And I'd say, you were just in a motel with a, with a young guy. And he'd be like, okay, no more joking. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you'd check in and, and he was very much interested in what he was doing. When you go into making a small movie like this and you get someone uh, big like Robin Williams to, to, to sign on, you know, obviously that helps get the movie made. Uh, it's exciting to have someone like Robin Williams. Do you fear getting on set every, every now and then that this person's going to be too big for how small your movie is, that they're not going to sort of want to have those long walks with you? They're not going to want to have these these long discussions? They're just going to want to sort of, you know, bust out the scenes as quick as possible, get the day over? Well, you know, you kind of trust that if they're going to do this little movie, they're not doing it for the money. <laughs> promise you that, you know. And, uh, um, you know, he's a weird guy like that you know like every generation has grown up with a different Robin Williams and we all it's it's hard pressed to find people who don't like him you know I mean I always think man famous people today man you got like 40 percent that hate you no matter who you are he's a pretty high ratio of people who love them you know and and I think but for some strange reason you, you, it, at least for me like I kind of bought yeah he, he, I don't know how a guy that famous I'd still believe he works in a bank <laughs> it's tough sometimes where it's like, come on, you know, you're not in a bank, you know. <laughs> but uh, with him, I, 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 I don't know. Well, there's he's not doing impressions, and he's not doing like, <laughs> you know, Mork inside the bank or anything. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you have to be there. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, you're right. I mean, and, and he's doing this film thinking very much about, well, let, let's try and get it right, you know. So. Now, you, when you, uh, you finished the film, he got to see a, a cut of it, or the final cut, before, before he passed away, right? What, what was his response? I mean, I, he, I would save him, you know? He'd be like, we got it. It's really good. <laughs> you know, we, we would talk. I mean, we had 20 cuts before it was done, and, and uh, he did see the final final, but, you know, he had lots to say as we'd go and putting scenes back in. Well, let's try that one. You know, it was, it was pretty great. And, and so he, he was would, a real collaborator, even, even through post. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'd want to see it all, you know? He'd be like, how's Kathy coming along in it? Is, it, is she happy? <laughs> so, uh, so very caring, you know? And um, how, how, how far after the film was it that he, that, that he passed away? Yeah, I'm bad with timelines and all that. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just glad that we all got to see it together, you yeah. know? What, what was it like for you hearing that he had passed away and you had just made this really somber, sweet movie with him, obviously, it's not about him, and he's playing a character. But it's in, you know, I, I I was watching the film with someone last night, and within the first two minutes of that music and him driving down the street, and he has this somber look on his face. She said, "Oh my God, this is so sad." Nothing had happened yet, you know, and she was she was she was almost moved to tears watching this yeah. Robin Williams drive down the street with sad music playing. I mean, do you do you worry that people are going to be able to de detach themselves from the real Robin Williams? To the, Rob, to the character in the film, or do you not want that? Oh, who knows, you know? I mean, you know, like I was saying, people play Pink Floyd and think it has to do with The Wizard of Oz. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, he, he th I think every great actor or anybody who's trying to do any kind of art always puts a bit of themselves in, you know? I mean, that's the, the, the gifted ones know how to do that, you know? And, uh, and uh, yeah, and as far as all that other stuff goes, you know, it's 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 like you know, movies is like a weird circus life. You go and and believe me, I did every job in the world, man, <laughs> and it's a weird one. You know, because you you sort of meet somebody on a Monday, and by Tuesday you're trying to tap into every emotional possible thing you can because you're trying to form 40 year relationships that are make believe, and then three months later you say cut or whatever, and everybody says see ya, and we'll run into you somewhere down the road. So it's it's a uh, it's like life really fast. So it's a uh, it's it's always a weird deal you know is it um not offensive but is it sort of a a fallacy for for the job when someone assumes that you may have captured something about him that you didn't realize because of the tragedy that happened afterwards like i said you know we're living in the world of make-believe making a movie and we're trying to tap into whatever part of your life or a story you know can relate to a character so so it's you know it's an impossible thing to answer you know I, I'd bottle it if I could, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, a uh, yeah, who knows, you know. Uh, you're also somewhat responsible. I don't, I want I don't want to say you're responsible for the career, but you kind of discovered Channing Tatum okay. and you put him in, in, in three yeah. movies, right? 
Yeah, I love, well, I didn't, I didn't discover him. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan, and I love him, and he's a maniac, and he's great. Yeah. What, what, what was he doing when you, when, when you first met him, and you put him in guide to recognizing your saints? And what was it about him that you noticed, recognized, that made you want to put him in the movie? I mean, he's arguably one of the, the biggest stars in the world now. Yeah, he's, which is really well deserved. You know, whatever. You, I am so corny. Come up here and say great things about people, but. He really is a sweet guy. You can guy. say great things about Channing Tatum. Everybody yeah, wants well, that. Yeah, well, he is a great guy, you know. And, 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 I mean, you know, when I was making the movie, I remember he came down and I was thinking, oh, man, the character that I had written then was this wiry, messed up, impossible to look at kid that I had grown up with that, that was a mess. And Channing was like this beautiful male model from, like, <laughs> from Florida. I'm like, what am I, nuts, you know? And then, uh, and then he was... He just sort of did something so special that for whatever reason, when we were rehearsing, like, he, he, he found it. So it was a kind of nice thing to mess with, you know. And he was dancing on set the whole time. I'm like, what's this guy doing? You know, he's like doing some weird step up. He thing was now. always dancing? Well, he'd, in between, he'd be messing around. I'd be like, what's going on over there? You know, <laughs> step up, this little weird thing they're doing. I don't know. What made you uh, continue to work with him? Uh, you know, I, oh, well, I, you know, I'm a fan. And, and, and he's, he's one of those real guys seems weird but you know like I say with Robin as well you know like it's hard sometimes to separate such a famous person these days or whatever you know like oh he wouldn't be doing that for whatever reason for me I I I, I believed he was walking down 31st street in Astoria so I could sort of believe anything with him you know well he wasn't famous then you could he wasn't, he very yeah. easily believe that right <laughs> well I don't know a guy looks like him I haven't seen too many but uh but, There's uh, not too many Channing Tatums walking down the street in a store. Right. Oh, they're all over the place. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think he maintains that quality, and it works, you know, with with all those films, you know. And then uh, at the same time, Guide to Recognizing Your Saints uh, introduced Shia LaBeouf to the to to the world in well, a dramatic he, way. Yeah, yeah. I remember he was the guy from Even Stevens, and I'm like, that guy. Oh no. And, and, and he. Wait, what was that response for even Steven? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> and, he, and he sent a tape because I said, oh, I don't know about the guy from even Stevens. And I, I, I always doubt everybody. I'm crazy. And, and, and he sent the tape and I was like, wow, this guy's really good. They're like, that's the same guy. I said, oh, snap. So wait, can we take a second? What is even Stevens? Disney show. Okay, that's I, I knew a, he was a in weird, a Disney show. I just like, didn't yeah. know the name of it. Yeah. I could have assumed, but okay. Well, so you, for us in the know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you're, big, you're a big Disney Channel fan? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, he, so, and, so he's, he's, a, he's, I love that guy too. It's a whole other can of worms, but I love him. And he's great, <laughs> yeah. Open, open that can of worms. Just, a, just yeah. give us one worm. Oh, man. Shia. I, I, I really do love the guy. I mean, it sounds corny again. I'm here like being the lamest guy. Believe me, I'll tell you who I hate. Or, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll, if you're going to open that can of worms, we'll get to that. Yeah. No, but I, and we just, me and Shia just did a new film together that we're finishing now, so that's how much of a fan I am, so, you know. With Jai Courtney as well, right? Yeah, and Gary Oldman and Kate Mara and Clifton Collins Jr., so it's a really what, special movie. What, what kind of, I mean, clearly actors love to work with you and they love to continue to work with you. Um, what, what do you think that has to do with your directing style? Do you, are, are, are It's all about the big bucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> This, you know, one million dollar movies. Nah. Was well, uh, it that you're a close collaborator with them, that you allow them into the post process a little bit, or at least you did with Robin? Are you very open and free with them on set and sort of really listen to them and well, work with them? You know, I, I'm, I come from the Woody Allen fan school of, of movies, you know, and I like people to put themselves in the film, you know, and uh, you try really hard to, well, you know, you have a script initially, and then you, when you have an actor like say Shia or, 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 or Robin or any of these guys, Channing, we're talking about, you know, well, I'm not going to force these words down your throat. You know, let, let's start talking and you, you get to hopefully know them a little bit. And then you, you say, okay, let me do a pass now because you're this guy, you know, and then, and then you just keep working together. It's, it's kind of fun, you know, like shoving words down people's throats. It, it, it's incredible when it works, you know, David Mamet, you can't beat that. But uh, I don't have those kind of skills. I'd rather blend a little bit of their real world into it, you know. So. Uh, well, well, speaking of blending real world into it, uh, I'd be remiss to, to, to not bring up uh, the writer of Boulevard, right? Isn't it somewhat influenced or inspired by his real life? Didn't he come out late in life? Yes, Doug. Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was very personal to him, you know. And so then it was, it was odd because, you know, you get in and, you know, we all have, we all love the film and we have very different opinions about what the characters are going through. Like I said, to me, it's a story of letting go. 
of the love of your life. For him, it, it's about being liberated, you know, uh, uh, later in life, you know. So, so, uh, but in the end, it's it's the same emotion. But yeah, it was odd saying, no, no, this is what your life is about. Just so you know, you know. <laughs> did you? I mean, uh, to have a writer so close to the material, was he on set at all? Did you did did you allow him on set? Did Robin work with him at all? Um, well, I mean, he came on set a couple of times, but it wasn't it wasn't overbearing. I mean, once once we started, you know, like I said, you know, you have you have an initial idea, and then the actors start bringing their truths to it. You know, Kathy Baker had lots to say, and. She had a, a really interesting thought about her, you know, she's like, you know, me and, you know, she takes it very serious. And she said, you know, we have an unwritten agreement and he's breaking it. And I thought that was a very interesting way of thinking of the film. You know, um, it was, a, you know, we had a lot of crazy things happen in this movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, like so. what? <laughs> what do you mean? All right, I'll give you things? something that's really yeah, what do you pretty mean crazy tripped, things tripped out. Well, you know, you're looking for a house to film in, you know, so we were in Nashville um, looking around, and we find this perfect house that, oh, the camera's going to work great in here. And then, strangely, the husband and wife there had separate bedrooms, which is a plus. Like, whoa, you know, you don't have a lot of money for production design, and she's a big reader, so it looks perfect. And then the wife came in, who lives there, and she looks kind of like Kathy Baker, which is getting a little more trippy, you know? And she's like, what's the movie about? And I'm like, ah, you know, you're afraid to tell people, because sometimes they'll be like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, ah, it's about a marriage. And she said, okay. And then, like, two days later, she came, and she was crying to me. I tell this story because she, she, we did a Q&A at somewhere, and she came up and told it, which is great. And, uh, and, and, sh and she comes crying to me, and she says, you know, I read the script, and, you know, my husband, he came out two years ago, and we love each other, so we stayed together. I said, you got to be kidding me. And she said, yeah. And then, and then she goes, and, you know, he looks a lot like Robin Williams. And he showed up, and he looks just like him. I mean, it's insane. And, and I'm like, holy cow. And, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, and so then she says, we just have one request. Can we be here when you film the, the, the big scene where they have a confrontation with each other? Oh, I my said, God. It's trippy. So I said, okay, you know. So then, you know, we were shooting this scene, and it's a pretty pretty n noisy scene between Robin and Kathy. They're getting into it. and It's a really well-crafted, well-written. It's my favorite scene in the film. I, yeah, I, I thought yeah. it was incredibly well done. Yeah, thanks. It was so. So they're doing it, and then in the uh, and and then the other on the side, I see the husband and wife uh, who live there. They're crying, looking into the monitors with headphones. But you know, and I'm like, and Robin Williams came up to me. He goes, "This getting a little too freaky for me now, man." <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was pretty trippy, you know. And the, like the actors were cool with keeping having them there the whole time. They stayed there the whole time, and everyone oh, was okay with it. Oh, it was so excellent because you know, then we'll, it started to become like weird life because. You know, Kathy Baker would come over to me and she'd say, you know, she's coming up to me and telling me that they didn't do it like this. Well, they're, they're wrong. I, I do love him and, and she loves him, but she's just being more. I was like, whoa, this is getting really <laughs> berserk. <you know? laughs> but, you know, it just shows so that the it's... The family it's, who owned the location was giving your actor notes. About their life. <laughs> Because it was, and then it was really weird because then people started thinking we were doing the story of their life. And, you know, so neighbors started showing up. It was, it was like a sort of Woody Allen movie happening behind our movie, yeah. Was, and that's one of those things that you as a director, I mean, I'm sure you're having two feelings at that time. One of which is like, this is amazing. This is, you know, organic and spiritual. Like, what's happening? I could never have planned this. And the other thing is like, get out of here. I got to direct this scene. Oh, no, I love it. The more really? chaos, the better. Yeah, it was, it was great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, leave my actors alone. We have work to yeah. do. Well, they would ask every once in a while. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear any more about how she doesn't, doesn't know. I knew Robin was gay the whole, my whole marriage, and I'd be like, but your marriage is fake. Their marriage is real. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was great, you know. It was, it was, but it was great because it complicated everything, and it made everybody feel like, well, maybe let me rethink this. So it, I like that being on your toes business, you know. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, let's weird. let's take some questions. Who has who has questions around here? Hi. Um, I'm wondering what inspired you to go into directing, or who inspired you maybe to go into directing? Uh, man, it was a weird trip. I, I didn't ever dream to do this stuff ever in a million years. I wrote like everybody else does in napkins and little weird things that no one ever was going to see. And then I, one page became two, became ten, and... A guy I used to work with at Tower Records published a book of mine <laughs> that was written in pen <laughs> that maybe sold a few copies. When I say a few, I mean a few, like possibly three or four. And, <laughs> and then I had a job at this place um, working, and in, in, uh, Robert Downey was friends with the guy, my boss, at the place. And we had become friends over the years. And, and uh, me and the guy in the dub room with me started cutting little weird two-minute um, freaked-out shorts that made no sense and, you know, 
Robert would come in and we'd say, hey, check this out. And he's like, oh, we should do a movie. And <laughs> somehow we ended up doing it. I mean, that sounds crazy, but we, we just talked. And I INT back then meant introducing to me. I had no idea interior, you know, it's very <laughs> weird way in. But, uh, but uh, hey, a job I, is a job. I, I, don't see, I don't see Robert Downey looking at little crazy shorts anymore and being like, let's make a movie of that. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he is that kind of out there and, 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 and creative guy that, that is down for who knows what. And it's nice that now he's Iron Man. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody have any more questions? We have some more questions around here. Right here. Hi. I'm curious to know if the tagline was in place before Robin passed away. Uh, um, <laughs> well, no. I mean, not that I know of. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a funny tagline. I guess, well, he makes a U-turn in the movie, so that's why it's there, right? Um, no, I, I, no. I mean, not that I know of, but I mean, I, I, I guess I understand. You know, we have, like I said, the writer and I have, have very differences, not very strong differences, but we have different thoughts about the film. You know, for him, it very much was about you can, you know, you can change at any time and, 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 and make a huge turn, you know. And, and uh, I would think when I first read the script, they're saying, like, my parents divorced in their 70s. And I remember, like, like, you know, when later on, after they passed, me and my sisters were like, maybe mom and dad would have been happier if they stayed miserable with each other. So, uh, so my thought is more about letting go. But um, so, I mean, that certainly is a part of the film. A, a, probably a bigger part than my weird thinking. There was an issue with, the, or not an issue, but there was something within the marketing, and I read recently, where the marketing team, you know, without talking to you, had sort of put Robin's death in, in into the trailer or something like that, or in, into the marketing of the film, used it to market it a little bit? Oh, I don't know about that. I hope not. <laughs> Maybe I misread an article uh, yeah, early yeah. yesterday. <laughs> oh, no, I can't imagine that. I mean, you know, I mean, who knows? You know, everyone says what they say, you know? Yeah. It's just... You make these things, it's the movie that we all wanted to make. I know it was what we planned to do. It was finished um, before any of this horrible stuff, you know? And, uh, and now it's out there, you know? So uh, you can see it. That, I mean, that's why we made it, so people can see it, hopefully, yeah. you know? Any more questions? We have a right here, back here. Yeah, this may be a little obtuse, but as a director managing, and you've managed all these different people, your particular strength, do you draw on the cerebral and the intellectual to manage and motivate actors and crew? Or is it position and power? Or is it compromise? When you're trying to achieve a certain goal in a scene or following the thread throughout the whole movie? I mean, am I making sense? I'm like, you know. Oh, I'm always I'm hard to understand anything. I'm, but... I'm kind of a slow child. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, join the club. <laughs> Is the question of whether or not your vision gets compromised when you're managing so many, so many people? Come from a, a position of strength, like you're the boss. <laughs> Is it cerebral where you try to leverage your knowledge and what you understand? Do you try to draw out? You compromise. Where well, do you find your strength? In yeah, compromise is a weird world word, you know, world too. But um, uh, it, it it's it's never for me, you know. Like you know, like I said, you get into these things because you, you moved for whatever reason, you know. And then uh, you try to find the truth in them. And for me, I don't think I'd be doing my job right if I were to force words down people's throats or no, you wouldn't do that, you know. You think about it, and 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 a compromise. Maybe collaboration is a better word, you know, because for me, um, you know, we, 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 you know, we had a, we had a, like, there's a scene in the film where they lie in bed together, Robin and Kathy, and they say, I love you to each other. And in the script, that was never there, you know, and we would, we rehearsed it just the night before, and they were lying in the bed together, and I, I was like, why, why don't you just tell her you love her, you know? And, and Robin said, you know, I love you, and then Kathy said, I love you back, and, you know, Initially, we got a little pushback from the people involved in the film, not, not the actors, but producers and everybody. They're like, wait, why are they saying I love you? And it was like, because they love each other, you know? And it, it became very poignant, I think, you know? And I thought it was important, you know? Uh, so those kind of things sometimes just happen. It's not like we're trying to say, screw you, we're going to do what we want. It was just like, well, let, let's give it a shot. And it was like, well, you do love each other. And it's not saying, I'm not gay. It's just saying, yeah, I love you. They, you know, so uh, I'm sounding really corny up here. 
but uh, it, that, that's what I mean about collaboration or, or, or creative. You're, you're just going with the flow, you know, when you're making a film in a lot of ways. You sure you have your script and it's a really nice blueprint, you know, and then you go out there and you say, okay, let's see what happens. You know, somebody walks by with 15 chihuahuas, get them on the camera, you know? <laughs> so. Any more questions? Not in that scene, but yeah. <laughs> Back to me. No more questions? Well, uh, I think that's it. I think we're good. Cool. Ditto, thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. As I said, sure. it's very sweet. Very Thanks. sweet. Thank you. Thank you.